in these last days, we're going to see a move of the Spirit of God that will not be man-made, fabricated by man. You see, the anointing does not come through performance. It comes through surrender. And I believe that we're going to see a generation rising up, a nameless, faceless generation, that God will use them to do exploits on the face of this earth. We will see acts coming to life again. Hear the word of God, a generation that will have a revelation. Come on, we are the generation that will walk in revelation. And how we will understand how the power of God operates and flows through our lives. And people of God, hear me out in this place. We're going to see it. We're going to see a generation that is tired of plastic, tired of gimmicks. We're going to see the power of God. Not people that mani manipulate people and buy a miracle. Buy this water for a thousand bucks and get healed. No. Just experiencing the living water. Jesus Christ, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. A touch from Jesus will change your whole destiny. It will change your whole life. No gimmicks. Just the true power of God. Come on, help me out in this place. So I'm tired of plastic. I want the real deal. Is there such people in this place that says, Vessel, I want the real deal. We want the fullness of the Spirit of God. Nothing else. Somebody needs to rise up and say, Vessel, I want the fullness of the presence and the power of God. Come on, is this somebody in this place that says, I'm hungry. I need more revelation. I want the power. Thank you, Jesus. Say, come on, thank you, Jesus. Mary had a revelation. The Bible says, he said, my God and my Savior. She had a revelation that he's a God and he's a Savior. The Bible says, I'm going to skip a couple of scriptures. It just moves my heart. Jesus came to, to Peter and he said, Peter, tell me, who does man say I am? Who does man say I am? Now think about, think about what I'm saying, I'm, I'm saying right now. Peter said, Lord, well, Lord, they call you a prophet. They call you, some, some call you one of the prophets of old. Some call you Elijah. So they saw the spirit of Elijah upon him. They saw the spirit of a prophet. So in other words, they saw Isaiah on him. They saw Jeremiah. They saw one of the prophets upon him. And then Jesus said, hang on, hang on. That's good enough. But who do you say that I am? What revelation do you have about me? Peter said, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Do you know what Jesus said to me? He said, Peter. Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. In other words, the revelation that you received from me was not hearsay. The revelation that you have about me is not hearsay. It came through a revelation from my Father. So Peter said, you are the Christ. In other words, he saw the office of the Christ upon his life. Herod asked Jesus the question, are you a king? What did, what did Jesus tell him? Jesus said, well, you said it. Why did Jesus say to Herod, well, you said it? Because Herod already saw kingship upon his life. People will call you what they see upon your lives. Jesus didn't say, hi, I'm prophet Jesus. He didn't say, I'm Christ Jesus. He said, what does man say I am? You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Come on, am I speaking to you in this place? He had a revelation, and people didn't, people didn't tell him. John the, John the Baptist, John the disciple didn't say, hey, Peter, this is the Christ. No, it came through revelation. This is what Paul says. Paul says, the gospel, the message that I'm preaching to you, I didn't get the revelation from man. I received it from Jesus. Revelation. Come on, revelation. I said revelation. The Bible says a prostitute, they brought her before Jesus. They wanted to stone her. Jesus looked up. He said, did anybody condemn you? No, Lord. He said, neither do I. Go and sin no more. She had a revelation that he's an all-merciful, all-gracious God. Come on, his name is merciful. His name is gracious. Come on, his name is kind. Oh, hallelujah. He's altogether lovely. He's a God of second chance. Job understood this, that God gave him back double for his trouble. Come on, he understood that God is a God that sustains and he supplies and he's a God that's more than enough. You believe that God can bring back, give back everything you lost? 
Come on, I want to I look directly into this camera. I want to tell you that God is coming and He's going to touch you in a supernatural way. You in your homes right now, if you lost anything, God is about to change it around. Your season for greatness is, uh, is in front of you. And I want to tell you, your story it does not stop here. God is going to resurrect some stuff in your life. It's happening. Come on, saints of God. Can we give Jesus praise in this place? I want to ask you again, what revelation do you have about this Jesus Christ? Who are He? Is He the King of kings to your life? Is He still the great physician, the great healer? You see, the Bible says that He's the healer. He is Jehovah Jireh. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is Jehovah Rofeka. He is Jehovah Shalom. He is Jehovah Nisi, the Lord your banner. Come on, He is the Prince of Peace. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Who, who is this Jesus to you today? What revelation do you have about Him? I've seen people criticize things they do not understand. Do you know the reason why people criticize things they do not understand is because they lack revelation. Anybody that knows who this Jesus is and you know his character will know that he forgives you, he loves you, he saves people, and he heals people. If you do not believe that Jesus heals today, then you should also not believe that he forgives anymore. Come on, healing and forgiveness is a twin. It walks hand in hand. When we have revelation about who this God is, oh, hallelujah. Come on, the leprous man came to Jesus and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus said, I will. I'm always willing. Be cleansed. He had a revelation that Jesus is always willing to heal, always willing to restore. Are you ready to see the greatest move of God upon your life? Somebody sitting in this place. And I see the Lord shows me clearly, I can actually come down and get you by your hand. But God, you know exactly who I'm talking to. You're sitting in this place with a burden today. The burden is so weighty upon your shoulders. After this morning, God says, the anointing shall destroy your yoke in Jesus' mighty name. And you will leap out of here because your breakthrough will search you. Come, I said your breakthrough will come knocking at your door. The thing that you were praying about will seek you out in Jesus' name. Bible says there's a man with the name of Bartimaeus. Now please understand and I want you to listen to me. I want to just, just calm down a little bit. The Bible says Bartimaeus was his name. His father's name was Timaeus. And Timaeus means a man, a, a, a precious man, a man of a high price. And many times we see as they looked at people's names, a name was a label given unto you. We all know that Jacob was labeled as a deceiver. And the, the day... He started wrestling with God. Now, people of God, hear me out. In these hours, we need to wrestle with God more than ever before. Because when we wrestle with God, it's a dying of self. And the Bible says, as Jacob wrestled with God, the angel said to him, you have to leave me because it's almost daybreak. And Jacob said, I will not leave you, not until you have blessed me. And as he was wrestling with God, the Bible says that the Lord asked him, what's your name? In other words, why did God ask him what's his name? God knew that his name was Jacob. God knew that he was a deceiver. But he had to confess with his own mouth, I'm Jacob, I'm the deceiver. And then God said, no more. From now on, I will call you Israel. So I'll take you from a cursing to a blessing. I will change your label. I will change what people think about you. And, and let, me, let me help you understand this today. We see people being criticized right through the scriptures. I can tell you that they started criticizing Peter as well as Peter got out of the boat and started walking towards his faith. Remember when Peter started sinking? Now, if you're in a boat full of men and you're the first one jumping out and started walking and you start to sink, they're going to criticize you. They're going to say, hey, look at that failure. Failure is not started to, when you start to sink. Failure is when you remain in that boat. And the only reason why people criticize you is because they took knowledge of you. Okay, help me out. They saw you. You, you are standing out for the enemy. And the enemy tries to distract you. But you know what? Jacob was not distracted. His mind was set upon his revelation. He's going to change my destiny. He's going to change my name. I will not be a, a cursing anymore. Come on. I will not be deceiver anymore. I will be blessed. And the Bible says... The Lord dislocated his hip and he started walking with, with a limp. Now hear me out. Don't trust any man that does not walk with a limp. Now it's quiet. It will sink in. It will sink in. But he was so desperate for the touch of God. 
he was so hungry that he said, I will not leave you. The same Jacob, the Bible says he slept and he got a rock and he, he placed his head upon the rock. And on the rock, he started dreaming. So God took him to a place of difficulty, a place of hardship, and he had the most beautiful dream. In your hardest times in your life, you'll have the biggest dreams. The greatest miracles will, will be birthed from that. This, this, so Jacob was labeled, Bartimaeus was labeled a certain blind man, the Bible calls him. The Bible says Jesus, now hear me out. The Bible says Jesus went into Jericho. This is as the scripture says. And as Jesus went out of Jericho, blind Bartimaeus was sitting there. So Jesus went into Jericho. Blind Bartimaeus was not sitting there. What did Jesus do in Jericho? Well, wherever Jesus went, he healed the sick, he preached the gospel. So he was healing people. He was preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And the Bible says as Jesus was walking out, blind Bartimaeus was sitting at the gate. Now the Bible says he had a tunic upon him. He had a mantle that, he, that, he, that covered him. Now a blind man, what they did was they had this, this outer garment that they wore. And now, say for instance, in Jericho, a blind man would have walked into Jericho. He would have removed this tunic, this mantle, this cloak. And he would have opened it up on the ground. And then people will walk past him. They will throw in, throw in some coins and some bread pieces. And whatever at the end of the day was in this cloak or in this tunic, it was, it was his stake. So it was his salary for the day. Then blind Bartimaeus would have taken this cloak and he would have head home. And then in this, he would have had coins and food to eat and whatever the case may be. But the Bible says this day that, that the blind man came in, he was sitting at this gate. And Jesus was walking past. Now, I want to ask you a question, and I want you to respond right now. If I'm telling you that Jesus is in this place, what will you do? Come and help me out. If I'm telling you Jesus is in this place right now, what will you do? You will cry out. You will push. You will shove. You will try to get to Jesus. Is that correct? This is what I will do. I'll, I'll, I'll give people some tackles, some rugby tackles in this place just to get to Jesus. Come on, get out of my way. I want to be with the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Now the Bible says, as blind Bartimaeus, he was sitting at this gate, just sitting. And he heard a commotion, people going on. And, and he said to his friends, well, what's happening? And they said to him, hey, don't worry. It's just Jesus walking past. I'm talking about a blind man that didn't have eyes to see. And he heard a commotion. And he heard it was Jesus. In other words, he heard his healing is walking past. He heard his bread of heaven is walking past. Come on, he heard that it's the rock of ages that is busy walking down the streets of Jericho. Come on, he heard it's the lion of the tribe of Judah walking down. You see, this John, the Bible says, John had a revelation of the throne. He had a revelation that God is our holy God. Let's try this side. I said he had a revelation that God is a holy God. He had a revelation that he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. I like, that, I like that song as we sang it, that they heard the roaring of the lion of Judah. Let me tell you something. As blind Bartimaeus sat there and Jesus, the lion of the tribe of Judah, was walking down the streets of Jericho, he heard the roar of the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he said, what's happening? Now, there's three things that happened. You know what? Bartimaeus was at the right place at the right time. You are in the right place at the right time. He was not there when Jesus walked in, but just before Jesus left the scenery, he was there. And he said, what's happening? It's only the rock of ages walking past. It's only the Savior. Come on, it's only the provider that's walking. You just keep quiet. Don't worry about anything. You just sit bigger. Come on. You just sit bigger. Somebody in this place need to hear me. The same eyes that saw you drowning will see you coming up again. The very same eyes that saw you going down will see you coming up, up, up in Jesus' name. Just keep quiet. But who is this? It's only the Savior of the world. It's only the name above every other name. But just keep quiet. Don't shout. Don't say anything else. And you know what, the, the minute he heard that it was Jesus, he had an instant revelation. A blind man had more faith than those with eyes. He jumped up, cried out, thou son of David, 
have mercy on me. He had a revelation that he's merciful, that he's the son of David. Now hear me out. Keep quiet. You can't shout. You're in church now. The miracle is walking past you. You had a revelation that he's merciful. You had a revelation that he's the healer. You had a revelation that he's the miracle maker. You had this revelation and somebody tries to shut you up. What will you do? Keep quiet. Don't shout as much. Hey, yeah, you're in the church now. You have to behave. Come on, I'm, I want to tell you, I have a revelation. I have a revelation. And it's like a fire that is shut in my bones. I can't keep quiet. I can't keep quiet. I want to tell the world, Jesus Christ is the Savior. He is the Son of the living God. Come on, He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And He's coming back. And I want to throw this in free of charge. The Bible says there will come a time and an hour that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. I want to tell you, those demons that try to kill you, they will bow their knees in the presence of Jesus. Sickness will bow and give acknowledgement that he is the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords. Come if you believe it, I want you to say hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah one more time. Hallelujah. If you have revelation, how can you keep quiet? Don't scream as much, Bartimaeus, just keep quiet. And you know what Bartimaeus did? The Bible says he started screaming even louder because this is what revelation does to you. The more people say Jesus does not heal, the more we want to show him, show the world that he still heals. The more people say Jesus doesn't save, the more we want to show the world he saves. Come on, somebody in this place. I said, come, somebody in this place. Keep quiet, don't shout as much. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Those with eyes kept quiet. They didn't scream. The man without eyes had more faith than those that can see. Come on, somebody in this place. And the Bible says as he was crying out, Jesus was walking and he heard from afar, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Do you know what Jesus did? The Bible says he stood still. He turned around. He said, call that man. The same crowd that tried to shush him. Ran to him and said, hey, be of good cheer. He's calling you. The same crowd that will tell you, you will never make it, will be the same crowd that will promote you. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. And if you didn't have enemies, if you didn't have enemies, in whose presence will God bless you? Because the Bible says he prepares my table before my enemies. My cup runneth over. Come on, am I speaking to somebody in this place? The same people that said, hey, keep quiet. Don't shout as much. They ran back. Be of good cheer, brother. Something you did worked. What they didn't understood was they were in Jericho. The last time somebody shouted in Jericho, the walls came down. When your breakthrough comes, don't keep quiet. When Jesus heals your house, you don't keep quiet. You tell the world. I said, you tell the world, thou son of David, have mercy on me. What revelation do you have of him today? Come on. I'm asking you the question. What revelation do you have of him? The Bible says, as they went to him and said, hey, he's calling you. Do you know what they did? The Bible says, he got up, he removed his cloak. Not to throw it open on the streets. The Bible says he removed it and he threw it one side. And he walked towards Jesus. Now I believe the minute he removed his cloak, he said, I'm finished with the past life. I'm done with this identity that the world has labeled me. When he removed the cloak, what he actually was saying, I had a revelation that I'll be on this street today. The King of Kings and the Lord of Lords will walk past Come on, he had a revelation that the son of David will have mercy upon him and he shall be healed.
The minute he made the, he made, he made the, when the minute they called him, he made this choice. I'm done with the past life. Are you done with the past life? Are you done with the old revelation? Come on. Are you done with your box mentality? Are you done with your religiosity? Come on, I'm speaking to somebody in this place. And the word of God says, as, as he removed his cloak, he walked towards Jesus. He stood before Jesus. Jesus asked him the question, what do you want me to do for you? Think about a blind man standing in front of you. What do you want me to do for you? Jesus didn't say, well, let's pray for your eyes. Jesus said, hang on. What do you want me to do for you? He said, uh, Lord, my eyes. Why did Jesus ask him, what do you want me to do for you? Because when blind Bartimaeus stood before Jesus, he didn't look like a blind man anymore. The minute he removed the cloak, the blind man identity died. And the power of Christ was risen upon him. And his whole exterior and interior was changed forevermore because he had revelation. Now, do you know what happened was? I, when I tell you to confess this with your mouth, shout hallelujah, say amen. There's a reason because your confession becomes your possession. Blind Bartimaeus cried out, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And do you know what happened? His confession collided with him. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. He confessed it. Call that man. Boom. He collided with his confession. When you start to open your mouth, every word is a seed. Did you know that? Every word is a seed. What revelation do you have? Now release it. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. I want you to help me out. Look at me. He's sitting. Blind man. But he had faith in his heart. This is what the world needs revelation constant revelation about who this God is understanding that he's a healer he's a savior come on his name is wonderful his name is counselor his name is mighty God everlasting father prince of peace come on his name is healer his name is mercy his name is grace come on his name is love his name is king of kings his name is I am his name is provider what revelation do you have? Son of David, have mercy on me. This morning you need to cry out to him. Hear the word of God. As you cry out, he will heal your house. He'll change your ministry. He'll take you from glory to glory and he'll change your story. In the name of Jesus Christ. And as he was having this revelation, this is the rock of ages passing by. Keep quiet. Just as long as you don't shout. But thou son of David, have mercy on me. Keep quiet. What's happening? If you ask me, Vessel, what's happening? Well, Jesus is in this place, but just keep quiet. Don't scream. What will you do? What will you do? What will you do? What will you do? Come on, what will you do? What will you do? What will you do? I'm saying the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords is just passing by. But don't scream. Just keep quiet. You can't scream as much. You're in church right now. I'm just saying that your miracle, the thing that you've been praying for is in this place today. But don't scream. Don't scream as much. Keep quiet, keep quiet. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Keep quiet, you can't scream. You can't scream as much. Listen to me. Your miracle is walking through the door, but don't scream. He's the rock of ages. He's the king of kings. He's the lord of lords. He's the bright the morning star. I said, no son of David, have mercy on me. Hey, this block, don't scream as much. Don't scream as much. It's just your healing passing by. It's just your savior passing through this building. Come on! I said this side, don't scream as 
much. It's just the healer that's walking past. Come on, cry out now, son of David. Now, son of David. Now, son of David. Come on. Somebody in this place need to hear me. As they, as they cried out in Jericho, the walls came tumbling down. The walls of sickness shall fall to defeat. If you have a revelation that He's the Savior, come on, He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore, your walls will come down in the name of Jesus Christ. When the crowd tries to shush you, what do you do? Come on, let the, let the devil hear you. Your sickness hear you. Come on, lift it up in this place. Oh, son of David. Oh, son of David. Lift it up, lift it up. Praise him, praise him, praise him. If I'm here, telling you your life will never be the same you're removing the cloak of old and you step into your revelation you will never be the same again hear me out this morning walk in the revelation that God has given upon your life start to operate in that which Christ has given you come on somebody in this place you have to shout until the walls come down Come on, if you believe that he's the king, you know, they said the greatest champion of all times has died. But the greatest champion of all times is alive and well, and he's seated next to the Father. His name is Jesus.